untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red combo deck titled The Gift That Keeps On Giving. It's a gate to the afterlife version of the Godfarer's Gift Reanimator deck, which is a concept we've explored before, but now with Kaladesh Remastered we got a ton of new upgrades to implement in the strategy, and the deck is now blue-red instead of the old blue-black version. Of course the centerpiece of the deck is still Gate to the Afterlife, a 3-mana uncommon artifact that says whenever a non-token creature we control dies, we gain one life, and then we may draw a card, and if we do discard a card, and for 2-mana we can tap Gate to the Afterlife and sacrifice it, and then search our graveyard hand and our library for a card named Godfarer's Gift and put it onto the battlefield, but we can only activate this ability if we have six or more creatures in our graveyard. So the goal of the deck is to get Gate to the Afterlife in play, fill the graveyard and then transform it into Godfarer's Gift, which is a seven mana rare artifact, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, we may exile a creature card from our graveyard, and if we do, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie, and it also gains haste until end of turn. So turn after turn we'll be able to make a 4-4 zombie, as long as we've got a stocked graveyard, and as if that weren't enough, we've got some additional combos on top of that, including Combat Celebrant, a 4-1 mythic rare creature, that if it hasn't been exerted this turn, we can exert as it attacks, meaning it's not going to untap during its next untap step, and when we do untap all other creatures we control, and after this phase there is an additional combat phase, meaning we also get an additional Godfarer's Gift trigger, and get an additional 4-4 creature, so we can potentially chain together a whole bunch of Combat Celebrants, which will be able to exert, untap our creature, and attack once again. And then we also have two copies of Morog, Fury of Akum, a new addition from Zendikar Rising, a 6-6 a legendary Minotaur Warrior, saying each creature we control gets plus one plus so for each time it has attacked this turn, and Landfall also gives us an extra combat phase, so we can potentially reanimate Morog, attack with all our creatures, they get that plus one plus so bonus, and then in our second main phase play land, untap all our creatures, get an extra Godfarer's Gift trigger, make an extra hasty 4-4 zombie, attack with everyone, and get an additional plus one plus so bonus on all attacking creatures, so between Morag and Combat Celebrant we can potentially just combo kill the opponent in the very same turn where we got a Godfarer's Gift in play, which is what makes this deck so exciting. And something else that makes this deck exciting is the addition of Trophy Mage, a 3 mana 2 2 from Kaladesh Remastered, that when it enters a battlefield lets us search our library for an artifact card with converted mana cost 3, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this gives us the redundancy to find our gate to the afterlife, which we didn't have before. And then at 1 mana we've got a whole host of creatures that can easily be sacrificed to enable our gate to the afterlife to keep filling the graveyard. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we still have Merfolk Secret Keeper, which can mill us for 4, hoping to hit a bunch of creatures, especially Combat Celebrant and Morog, and then we can still play the 0-4 afterwards. Then Bomat Career is also a great addition from Kaladesh Remastered, a 1-1 hasty creature that whenever it attacks, exiles the top card of our library face down, and for 1 red mana we can discard our hand and sacrifice Bomat Courier, which will also trigger Gate to the Afterlife, and then we get to put all cards exiled with Bomat Courier into our hand, so that's one way to quickly empty our hand and fill the board with cheap creatures, and then Bomat Courier can refill our hand with a bunch of new cards, hopefully including Gate to the Afterlife, which we can then transform. And then we also have Fanatical Firebrand, a 1-1 hasty Goblin Pirate that we can tap and sacrifice to deal 1 damage to any target. Gives us a little bit of early interaction, and it's also a Goblin that synergizes nicely with Skirk Prospector. And Prospector is a reason why we can potentially combo off on turn 3 in this deck, because we can sacrifice any Goblin to add red mana to our mana pool. So let's imagine that on turn 2 we have a Firebrand and a Prospector in play, then turn 3 we play out our Gate to the Afterlife, then we sacrifice Firebrand to the Prospector's ability to add red mana, we get to trigger Gate to the Afterlife because a creature died, so we get to draw and discard, maybe discard a Comod Celebrant, and then we still have that one red floating mana, so if we have any additional Firebrands or Prospectors in hand, we can play them out and repeat this process until we run out of Goblins, and then at some point we can sacrifice a Prospector itself, add a second red floating mana, and then if we have six or more creatures in the graveyard, we get to sacrifice our Gate to the Afterlife and search up our Godfarer's Gift, and then if our graveyard is filled with Comod Celebrant, we could potentially win the game on the spot. So Prospector definitely speeds up the deck. 
And then we also have two copies of Hope of Girapur, another edition from Kaladesh Remastered, a legendary artifact creature Thopter with flying, and we can sacrifice Hope of Girapur, and until our next turn, target player who was dealt combat damage by Hope of Girapur this turn cannot cast non-creature spells, so that's a great way for us to potentially fight counter spells, as we get to hit the opponent with Hope of Girapur, sacrifice it, and then maybe play out our Gate to the Afterlife without having to worry about counter spells. And then we've got our four copies of Gate to the Afterlife, Comot Celebrant and Trophy Mage, as well as four copies of Emery Lurker of the Loch, which is also incredibly synergistic in the deck, costing one less to cast for each artifact we control, and we've got six one-mana artifacts, letting us play Emery on turn two. And when Emery enters the battlefield, we mill the top four cards, so also helps us fill the graveyard for Gate to the Afterlife, and we can tap Emery and choose an artifact in our graveyard that we can cast for the turn, so Emery can potentially help us get back Gate to the Afterlife if it got discarded or countered, and can also get back or Beaumont Career and Hope of Girapur. And then topping off our curve, we've got our two copies of Morag and two copies of Godfarer's Gift. So if the first one somehow gets exiled, we still have a backup copy, and we can potentially get two copies of Godfarer's Gift in play if we've got the time to sacrifice two gates. And as a side note, if you don't play Morag, all the converted mana costs in the deck are odd, so you could potentially play Obosh as your companion, but now that the companions got nerfed, I don't think it's necessarily worth it. And then going over the mana base, you could potentially include Fabled Passage to synergize with Morag, but because the deck wants to be so mana efficient in the first few turns, I decided against it. But we do get to play with Spiral of Canal, a nice addition from Kaladesh Remastered, an untapped blue-red dual land that doesn't cost us any life. And then we've got Steam Vents, which will cost us two life, as well as a River Glide Pathway, another addition from Zeneca Rising, as well as four mountains and four islands. And then we also have two copies of Phyrexian Tower as a nice sacrifice outlet to help us trigger Gate to the Afterlife, and potentially generate two mana, which can also be helpful when transforming Gate into Godfather's Gift. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Phyrexian Tower can potentially generate a mana needed to play Gate to the Afterlife. And we've got some cheap creatures we can easily sacrifice. Turn one, I'm kind of liking... Mill with Secret Keeper. Is that better than just playing Firebrands? Maybe I should just play Firebrand. Next turn I can play Hope of Girapur using Tower and mill myself with a Secret Keeper. Take it from there. Ooh, Prospector could be great too. So I guess we'll play that instead. Opponent with a Zagoth Triome. Luckily, no Thoughtseize. Alright, so I feel like we can maybe even transform Gate if we get lucky. So I think I mill with the Secret Keeper. Hit two creatures. Play Gate, sacrificing Hope of Girapur. And then use the Prospector's ability, sacking Firebrand to make one mana. Discard Gifts. And then how many creatures do we have? One, two, three, four. So if I draw into a creature, we get there. If I don't, we kind of fail. But uh, yeah, gotta try it. Come on, creature. Another tower, that's too bad. So we're one creature short now. But next turn I get to play Secret Keeper, sack it to Fraxian Tower, and we'll get to transform. So we were incredibly close to a turn 3 Godfarer's Gift. But we'll have to wait one more turn. And a Comot Celebrant is pretty nice too, so play Secret Keeper. Sacrifice it. Trigger Gate. And I can even mill myself some more here in the hopes of finding more Celebrants. Which we did. Alright, this is going to be exciting. And then we should have one left in our library, I believe. Get back Celebrants. Exert. Hit for four. 
Get back Celebrants. Exerts. Hit for four. And get back Morog. And attack. And there we go, with a one hit KO with double Celebrant and Morog. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck, and we've got an acceptable hand. Missing a turn 2 play at the moment, so that's what we'll be hoping for. Opponent's taking quite a few mulligans, so it's probably a Spirit Dancer deck. And we see a turn one savior. Uh, could kill the savior with firebrands. Uh, is that worth it? I think so. Next turn we'll play gates and then I might just sacrifice courier the turn after. Opponent turns out another savior, maybe scared of playing their spirit dancer into red open mana. I'll make that another savior. So if they have a spirit dancer in hand, they won't have many auras left. Amri a great draw too. So play gate, and next turn can play a one mana Amri, and maybe still sacrifice courier afterwards. So it's not going to be the fastest Godfarer's gift ever. But slow and steady wins the race, especially when the opponent took a double mulligan. Third Spirit Dancer. And an attack for two. Backup gates, not really needed. And we milled over Comet Celebrant and Morog, so that's exciting. So, yeah, it's unlikely that I can transform Gate this turn, unless... Yeah, I guess it's not actually all that difficult, I just need to draw into a land with Beaumont Courier. So, I, let's go for it. Take action, just to put a random card in the graveyard. And we hit a land, sadly, it's a Spire Bluff, so I don't get to transform my gate this turn. Oh well, we tried. But next turn we should be able to transform gates, and then... Actually, maybe should not have played my land there, since we have Morog in the graveyard, so... Hitting my land drop afterwards could be beneficial. Second Spirit Dancer. And do they have an aura left? They do Sentinel's Eyes. Alright. So that's gonna make a 3 5. And attacks. Found another gate. So Emery could get back Beaumont Courier. I can sacrifice Beaumont Courier. But that's not super helpful. Three, four, five. Yeah, I guess might as well. So I'll play Beaumont Courier. Sacrifice Gates. And then if Beaumont Courier hits a land, that could potentially be helpful. So I've got a gift in the graveyard. Second search from library. Move to combats. Get back. Probably combat celebrant first. And then 
I can get back Morog. Sacrifice Courier if they try and kill it here. Right, opponent doesn't kill Courier, so we maybe get an extra attack. Get back Morog. So now Courier can attack and we get two draws towards an extra land. And does Emery attack? Yeah, sure. So they can take out either Courier or Emery with the Spirit Dancer by making it indestructible. Opponent takes it. Is that surprising? Sacrifice Courier. And let's see if we hit a land. We did. And we get to play Firebrand. And then what do we get back with the extra gift trigger is a question. Probably kill the smaller Spirit Dancer. And then if they want to make that indestructible, they wouldn't be able to protect a 3-2. Opponent lets it go. And then for the final one, could get a trophy mage to get my last gate to the afterlife. Maybe that's the play. Sure. And attack with all. Well, that was a pretty good turn. The opponent probably should have just tried to make one of their creatures indestructible as soon as possible, because then our extra attack steps wouldn't have been as impactful. So they're gonna take out Emery after making Spirit Dancer indestructible. So they get to untap with the Spirit Dancer in play. The next turn I can transform an extra gate, I believe. Three, four, five, still have at least six creatures in Graveyard. So we'll have double gifts. And then if we draw an extra land, that's going to be great with Morog. Sentinel's Eyes on the Alsaid. Is there a hope of Girapur in my graveyard? There is not, otherwise we could have just killed the opponents with a flying creature, although now with Angelic Gift that no longer works. Yeah, I think getting double gift is better than milling with Secret Keeper, even though we could hit another Komod Celebrant. Get two triggers. And then I guess we can get Emery, which can mill some more. And there's Hope of Girapur, so now the second trigger could also get Hope of Girapur, but now my opponent found a flying creature, so it's no longer super relevant. Um, but I'll still go for Hope of Girapur, I think. And attack with all. And they should be dead here. All right, sweet. So showing off some pretty sweet combos against the Mono White Spirit Dancer deck. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. This is going to shine against some sort of creatureless combo deck with double hope of Gearpur. As we see, Catria Trium. So it could be a team or ramp deck. Or energy deck, as we see a tune with Aether. So I guess I want to sacrifice Hope of Gearpur the turn before they could cast Aetherworks Marvel, which is turn 4. So I think I'll wait one more turn to sacrifice it. Alright, so we get to untap. And then we'll attack first. Play Gates. Sacrifice Hope of Girapur, which triggers Gate. Put this Komot Celebrant in the graveyard. And then I'll sack Prospector to play an extra Hope of Girapur to set up for next turn so we can do the same. And then discard Trophy Mage, seems fine. So currently have four creatures in the graveyard. So we're not quite ready to transform Gate into Gift yet. Our opponent is not allowed to cast non-creature spells. So they're probably just gonna sacrifice Puzzle Knot. Beaumont Courier, excellent draw. So, play Gates number two, so we get to double draw discard trigger. Sacrifice Hope of Girapur once again. And we might be able to just lock the opponent out of the game. And Emery would have been quite nice to play as well, since that can get back. Hope of Girapur turn after turn, but I guess we're happy to just put more creatures in the graveyard at this point. And then now we should have the six creatures required to transform gate. And we can also just get back a Hope of Girapur. And we'll even have double Godfar's Gift in play. So gift number one. Opponent tries to kill my Bowman Courier, that's fine. Get an extra gate trigger. And get gift number two. One of them needs to get back Hope of Girapur, but I guess we can get Komot Celebrant first. Could be banned, I guess, if they have another Harness Lightning. Should have uh, thought about that. So maybe I do get back another Hope of Girapur, and I can sacrifice it after the second attack if something bad happens to my Komot Celebrant. And get two more triggers, and then Emery. And we might mill another Komot Celebrant here. We don't. And then we'll just go with... I guess a uh, Beaumont Courier. Attack with all. And sacrifice Hope of Gearpur once again. Zero so points at one, they can't cast non creature spells, and they're facing double Godfarer's Gift. So good luck. Get to untap, and Fanatical Firebrand should do it. Sweet. Well, that was a pretty impressive showing of Hope of Girapur stopping the Aetherworks Marvel combo deck, even if they had the Marvel in hand. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's gonna be a little bit on the slow side, since we need to play Trophy Mage before we get Gates, and we don't have any mana acceleration from Skirk Prospector, and we're missing the third land, so if we miss on a land for a few turns, we're going to be in trouble. 
That being said, I think I'm still gonna keep... And then turn one, probably just mill myself with a secret keeper. Opponents with a turn one stomping ground, so maybe a gruel aggro deck. So the 04 blocker could also come in handy. Cleansing wildfire. Don't see that one very often, so maybe they've got some synergies with that. Yeah, I guess we'll keep on milling. And I think I like playing Hope of Girapur in case my opponent's trying to pull off some non-creature combos. Currently have four creatures in the graveyard. Blast Zone could also potentially destroy lots of 1-drops. Luckily found a land. So, I'm okay sacking the Hope of Girapur here. Potentially delay the opponents. And then we'll play Trophy Mage. Which can get a gate. And then we're very close to transforming it. Currently have... Five creatures in Graveyard, and Firebrand can easily be sacrificed. Opponent cycle the Sweltering Suns. This turn, just gonna play Gate. And hit for two. So I guess uh, Cleansing Wildfire is a combo with Cascading Cataracts, because it's indestructible. It can be uh, destroyed by the Wildfire, and you still get to search up a land. So it's an interesting way to ramp. Blast Zone goes up to two. Not enough to kill my gate. Ooh. Karn the Great Crater, that's unfortunate. Can get Graveyard Hate and also stops the activated ability from gates. So yeah, that's unfortunate. I guess at least we get to kill Karn with Firebrand. Opponent has to use Tormod Script before I can use Gates. But now we get to refill the graveyard with Emery. I am proud to have fought. So it definitely could have been worse. Only one creature at the moment. Wildfire for the Wombo combo here to ramp for one. Build your own rampant growth. Alrighty, so Emery's gonna cost me two mana, only have the one artifact in play. So I think I start by just sacking Firebrands and then hoping to mill more creatures. Discard Trophy Mage. And then now I could play Emery. Emery's probably better than Firebrand, since we also get to sacrifice one of the Emery's in play and get an extra trigger. So we'll play Emery. Keep the original. But we get to mill four and get a gate trigger. So now by putting the Firebrand in the graveyard we should get there. Even drew the Prospector, which I guess makes this even better. So we'll discard a gate. And then I can play Prospector. Play Firebrand. They can't sack Blast Zone yet. And then we get two additional gate triggers to potentially mill another Celebrant. Opponent charges up Blast soon. The 
this car tower. And discard Morog and then transform gate. And do we have any celebrants? We don't. So is Morog the best we can do? Or do I go for Emery to try and mill some more? I guess Morog's fine. Sadly, we've already played a land for the turn. But we got our Godfather's Gift in play, which is what matters. Opponent falls to 11. Five mana for Nyssa, who shakes the world. Untaps Cascading Cataract, so they've got an indestructible Vigilant land now. Alright, that's a pretty cool combo too. They could still sacrifice Blast soon, decides not to. Keep the canal until our second main phase to get an extra Morok trigger, I believe. So for now we'll just move to combats. Does Emery get anything back? Could get a gate back. I guess that's maybe better than attacking. Sure. Move to combats. Trigger gifts. Get back. Probably not a 3-drop since they could sack Blast Zone and the tokens keep their mana cost. So we'll go with uh, Firebrand. Opponent sacrifices Blast Zone. That happens. Ooh, Celebrant. And Trophy Mage can go send both at my opponents. Second main phase, play a lands, trigger Morag, get an extra gift trigger, and get a Celebrant. And that does it, sweet. So even through Karn getting Tormod Script, we managed to still combo off. So yeah, the deck has some resiliency to it, and the cool thing is that it also dodges Gravedigger's Cage as Graveyard Hate, since that doesn't stop Godfather's Gift from reanimating creatures, since we exile them first, instead of bringing them right back. So overall, I've been quite impressed by this blue-red Godfather's Gift deck. Trophy Mage adds a ton of consistency to the deck that we didn't have before, and the deck's just a ton of fun to play. It's also not the easiest deck to play, there's a lot of different lines of play with how you want to sequence, so makes it both challenging and fun. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.